go for steering, everybody. Uh, how are you guys doing tonight? I'm sure you'll be tired of getting asked that shit. I'm sorry. Um, I realized the other day that I failed my children. I have three daughters. The oldest is 19. The youngest one are twins. They're nine. And the youngest for Christmas decided they wanted to get Kim Kardashian perfume. And I didn't know that herpes had a scent, so... Uh, oh my God. I'm coming out swinging, motherfuckers. You can actually spell just like her, too, for $64.99 at Nordstrom Rack, so... Uh, French fries have never made me shit my pants before, but... Uh, Taco Bell stepped its game up, so, uh, not show for Speaking of Taco Bell, I love to read the end of the year, uh, like, polls, scientific polls and stuff that fans make, and I saw something the other day that really bothered me. There was some scientific food magazine online that said that Taco Bell, for the year 2022, was voted the most healthiest fast food restaurant on the planet. And I call bullshit on that one. Because to do experiments, you have to do science. And Taco Bell food doesn't stay in anybody's body long enough to do science. So. I feel like if you're going to make stuff up, just say Taco Bell's number two. And there you go. That's, that would not be the last shit joke this evening, just going to have more. Speaking of food, uh, anybody get a chance to get the McRib when it came back last month? I call bullshit. Somebody here, I'm sure, had one. I had several, so I had enough for all of you guys. So, I'm almost 50, so I've, it, the McRib's been around about as long as I've been alive. And I feel that every time it comes back, McDonald's always says, it's never coming back again. And I think they, they really mean that. However, I feel every year and a half, two years, in some warehouse somewhere, they find some more parts they gotta get rid of. <laughs> <laughs> Just lather it in some barbecue sauce. Fat fucks like me will eat it. I know you're gonna be shocked by this next statement, but I watch porn. So, uh, When I'm on the road, I like to get hotel rooms that have great Wi-Fi and free lotion. So, you um, know what I'm talking about. My favorite's the cucumber one. Time to make some pickles. So, um, I didn't get that last night. So recently, I was on the road. I was in OKC and. Uh, went home after the show and I was missing my wife and uh, I was like, you know what, it's, it's date night for Billy. Uh, put the mood lighting on, lay out in the bed, and had all the towels and was ready to go and I went to Pornhub and uh, decided to just do a random search and you should never do that when you're on a porn site. Because the algorithm that chooses the scenes for you has a really fucked up sense of humor. And they chose a scene that was a modern porn scene. Oh shit's creepy. I'm tired of hearing Step Brother I'm stuck. No. Not in Arkansas. So uh, They're Nathan's. They're Nathan's. Come on. Real time. Um, Real time. But the scene it chose for me was, it wasn't one of those, um, but it was creepy just the same, and I'm gonna tell you why. The, the male and female performers both were totally hairless. Not a single bit of hair on their body, from the top to the bottom, and it was creepy as shit. <laughs> First I was like, is this a remake of that shitty movie from the 90s, Powder? Like what the, <laughs> the hell is this shit? 
And then my mind really started to wander, and I'm like, are they doing it for aerodynamics sake, like to go faster? <laughs> like if I was to shave off my hair, I could beat my wife. So I was like, no, nope, I'm almost out of lotion. Next scene, and I just hit skip. And once again, it shows another scene for me. Now this scene was more something I was familiar with. It was from the, it was from the, like, the late 70s, early 80s. And those shit had substance, it had, it had storylines. But it also had a whole bunch of hair. As I had forgotten, born from the 70s, nobody shaved anywhere. Anywhere. I went from hardwood floors to shag carpet in five minutes. It was like everybody's crotch just went into hiding and joined Al Qaeda. Tend to lose people on that one, but <laughs> basically what I'm telling you is watching porn from the 70s is like watching a close-up of the cast of Duck Nines and eat hot dogs. So uh, that one will haunt you for a while, and I'm sorry. So I'd invite you over for a, a cookout, and you're gonna be like, "What are you having? Hamburgers and hot dogs? No one. Uncle Si's gonna show up." Before I came here tonight, I staying at the hotel, and it's weird now in the hotel, they don't give you like smaller bottles of shampoo and stuff in the shower. They actually have them inside of the shower, and they're on this like metal rack. So when it was time for shampoo, I, I pumped it, came right out, shampoo, no problem. Came time for the body wash, pumped it, no problem. Then it came time for the conditioner, and instead of it pumping directly down, it shot right into my fucking eye. <laughs> right in the face. So ladies, I get it. <laughs> that shit sucks. <laughs> so let me take the moment to be like, this is a toast for y'all for being good sports, because holy shit. I actually screamed something I never thought I would ever scream. I said, it got my eye! <laughs> it messed my hair up. <laughs> Anybody familiar with the video game uh, Assassin's Creed? Anybody? My, my nephew loves that game, he's always playing it. And uh, the other day I had an idea for my own video game sort of the same same type of my game is called Creed's Assassin. In order to win this game, you have to kill every member of the band Creed really slowly. But technically, you can't win the game because Scott Stapp, the lead singer, committed career suicide years ago. So, that's, that's where y'all fuckers draw the line? Okay. Just know if he was here right now, he would thank you with arms wide open. So, uh, <laughs> I'm on my fourth marriage. We just had our two year anniversary. <laughs> we're also both fucking lazy, so we'll probably be celebrating a 50 year anniversary down the road. But all my, my prior marriages and my prior relationships, I learned a valuable lesson that made me stay single for a while. And this is a message to everybody. Um, and I'm going to pass it on to my nephews. And that is, do not stick your dick in crazy. I've done it enough that my penis has an honorary degree in psychology. I named him Hannibal Lecter. Clarice. But I'm also man enough to admit that I was the common denominator in all those messed up situations. So I'm gonna tell my daughters when they get older, don't let crazy stick a stick in you. It's equal opportunity. <laughs> Everybody always says, oh, they always try to come up to me with a story afterwards, and oh, I got something that you can put in your act. And something happened in my last relationship before my wife that, uh, that basically submitted the fact, gotta stop doing this, Billy, because you're gonna die. And that was, if you're dating a woman, 
and she has a whole bunch of stuffed animals on the bed, like a shit ton, at some point she's gonna hit you with a fucking car. That's a true story. She drove a Fiat, and I'm big bonded, so it just sort of clipped me. I just was like, okay, crazy bitch, go away. <laughs> I just, and I asked my, I had a heart to heart with my dad one time. I said, why, why am I always doing this? And he said, you ever been to the amusement park, son? I was like, yeah. He said, what rides have the longest lines? The scary ones. <laughs> Too shit. I had a friend who was wanting to have a cookout to watch the football game recently, and he had a he did a Facebook event, and it may have been the dumbest one I've ever seen in my life. It said, "Sausage party in my house," and it got worse because inside, the, the, all the details said was more meat than you can fit in your mouth. <laughs> No. But I would, of course, because why not? $20 is $20. That's what I want. <laughs> Have you guys ever had a conversation so dumb that you looked for cameras? I mean, I'm not talking about the last 15 minutes. Like, like really, really dumb. I had a show in, uh, in Oxford, Mississippi, the home of Ole Miss. And after the show, I went with the other comics and we went out drinking and we're standing there and this lady walks up and she was trying to get to know each one of us personally, like ask us, you know, are you married? What do you do for a living? When she got to me, she said, what do you do? For, what's, what's your day job? You know, because because of what happened a few, year ago, a few years ago with the middle of life virus, so I, a lot of comedy clubs closed. And so I actually got back in the medical field and I told her, I was like, I, my day job is I work with people with Down syndrome and I help them live a better life. I thought she would stop fucking talking to me after that. I was wrong. She then said, now I need to let you guys know this, that she was pre-med. And she said the dumbest shit I've ever heard in my life. I remember I've been married four times. She said, with a straight drunk face, She goes, my grandmother could tell you as soon as a baby was born if it had Down syndrome or not. I was looking for the fucking cameras. I'm like, there's no way she just said that. But she did. And everybody, every one of us, when you're in a situation like that, most of us decent people have two angels on your shoulder. Because technically, according to the Bible, they were both angels. And the one of them was like, walk away, Billy. Tell her to shut up and leave. The other one was like, please continue. <laughs> and I wish she never had continued. Because she said, my grandmother, actually, her exact word was, my meemaw, would look at the baby when it was born. Because I had questions like, what the fuck was she doing in the delivery room? <laughs> we never got that covered, but she said she would look at the hands, and if they didn't have any fingerprints, they had Down syndrome. <laughs> what? <laughs> I ran away. Like, I was, I, I was, I had never been more embarrassed for a human in my life. I just took off. But, of course, the other comics and us started a game. Whenever somebody would say something dumb, usually it was us, the other ones would yell, check your prints! <laughs> <laughs> Only till recently I didn't tell this story on stage, and here's why. During Thanksgiving, I told my family that, you know, my wife's family that story, my in-laws and my brother-in-law, 
Both of my brother-in-laws adopted it as their saying now. No matter what happened, if they were if we were sitting in traffic and somebody did something dumb, they would both scream, Check your prints, bitch! <laughs> and then one day, all that changed. We were at dinner one night, and we were just laughing and carrying on, and finally, my mother-in-law slammed her pan on the table and said, you guys got to stop saying that. That's not funny. I was like, why? She goes, I don't have fingerprints. <laughs> she really doesn't need to. <laughs> Absolutely. Can I get you a drink while I'm up? I was like, are you a fucking art thief that like burn your fingerprints off with acid? What the hell? So when you leave here tonight and somebody does something new, something dumb, check your prints. It's going to be my next t-shirt. My, uh, the younger, the younger girls, the twins, are going into a phase because they're on social media all the time. Again, we failed them. I mean, they're literally like five years away from the stripper pole. But, uh, but they're going through a phase right now that like every time they see a cute animal, that's that they beg their mom or they beg me. They're like, we want a pygmy go, we want a piglet. And they're like, you're not getting out of that shit. But recently they were like, we want a duckling. And I was like, I might be able to do that. But if I can't do it, I sure as hell can stop them from wanting one. So I took them to a park in Tulsa and I gave them bread, just a little bit. And I let him loose and was like, go feed those ducks. There's some ducklings over there. They learned a valuable lesson that day. When you run out of bread, feed ducks. And that was, no doesn't mean shit to a duck. <laughs> Even after stitches in the hospital visit, they were like, nope, he's still on a duck. Shit. Check your prints, but... So my buddy has a farm, and I took, we took him to the farm, and of course he's got like these, these fancy ones that have been bred, and they got like special colors on them, and I'm like, where are the defective ones at? Like, where are the dead ones? Like, that's what we want. And there was one off in the corner by himself. He was cute, so I snuck away to see what, what might have been wrong with him. He had, he had both of his, his feet. His, beat, his, beat, his bill worked. His eyes were both there. I said, well, this one seems normal. So I said, hey, girls, we're going to get this one. So I put him back down. And the minute I put him back down, he fucking bolted. And then he automatically turned left and ran right into the wall. I was like, well, that can't be normal. So I picked him up again. I laid him down. And he did that shit again. So we named him NASCAR. <laughs> I was gonna go with Dale Earnhardt, but they were like, no, too soon, too soon. <laughs> a buddy of mine no. uh, just got back from uh, Afghanistan. He's been there for a few years. And he messaged me the other day. He was like, hey, Billy, I'm gonna be in town. Uh, I'm gonna go see the family, but I wanna catch up. I haven't seen him in four years. I was like, yeah, man, come on over. And on the way over, he sent me a text. He was like, hey, you know what I haven't had in four years? I'm a goddamn comic. My mind automatically went to two things. Whores and whores. But that's not what he craved. Before I could respond back to him, he said, Sonic, cherry limeade. What? Four years? So I let him have his cherry limeade and when he got there, he was like, hey man, it's half an hour. Would you like something? And I was like, yeah, I'd like the Coke. I know I sent him that. That's what I typed. He got, I would love a cock. That's not what I said. <laughs> but before I could reply back to him, he sent me a disturbing message. He said, holy shit, 
A lot's changed in four years, hasn't it? <laughs> and before I can reply to that, he said, if I would have known, I would have invited you to the sausage party I got invited to the other day. You would have fucking loved it. Something I'm not afraid to admit, I have a foot fetish. Totally okay with that. There's some feet goblins out there apparently. And it, and it legitimately used to be a very safe and convenient fetish to have, and I'll explain to you why. If you get caught looking at boobs or butt, and the woman catches you, you're busted. You can't get out of that shit. You can't be like, there's something on your shirt. No, you're fucked. But if she catches you looking down, she's going to think you're depressed. And you got five more minutes of toes. But unfortunately, the internet ruined that shit for us. Because the goddamn rapey feet goblins are everywhere. On Instagram, they're really bad. I had a friend, her mother died recently. And she posted like a, a reel of like just 30 pictures. Around picture 27, you can tell that she was done taking fucking pictures that day. And she's just posing with random people like, please God, let me go home. And the last couple pictures, for some weird reason, you could see her feet. And those were the only pictures that had 374 comments on it. People were like, let me see them souls, baby. <laughs> How much for toe picks? Somebody actually asked if they would, she would sell the shoes she was wearing to them. Yeah, it's fucking creepy. And then she blocked me, so I can't hear that shit no more. <laughs> I know looking at me, you may not believe this, but uh, yeah. I'm a criminal. Not really. But I bought a car three years ago, and uh, for three years, I decided to see how long I could go without changing my temporary tag. <laughs> and I got away with it for three years, until about a month ago. I, I would always make sure I only traveled during the daytime. And in Oklahoma, that's a serious fine. I don't know how it is here, but if they catch your ass, that car is gone. And it's like $1,000 to get it out. And this, I saw this cop behind me, and I was like, oh shit. Time for some evasive maneuvers. So I pulled into this random neighborhood that I had no idea who lived in. And I figured I was going to get away from him because he was far enough in traffic. And then I saw some lights come on behind me, and apparently he followed me. I was like, what do I do? How do I get out away with the shit? So I pulled into a random driveway, random person's house. I figured he would be like, oh, he lives here. Nope, pulled up behind me. I was like, I don't want to go to jail. So when I got out, I waved at him. And I actually checked the mail of the fucking house I was at. <laughs> To add to the, you know, he's really gonna believe me now. And he said, Sir, can I talk to you real quick? I was like, I'm committing a federal offense right now. Do you know who you are? <laughs> so I walked to the front court, front door, and I had random keys. And I'm like, oh, let me go in the house real quick, officer. He's like, no, 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 no. He's like, uh, what's up with your your tags? It's like, you got that car three years ago. The lies just came out. I was like, well, I was overseas doing comedy and I left it at the airport. But I promise you I'm going to go take care of it today. And he was like, all right. I'm going to come back through. In about an hour, if the car's there, I'm telling it. And then he left. And I was like, got away with it. 
And then the front door opened, and a six foot seven man, very large black man, who I'm actually friends with now, because <laughs> I didn't have a choice. <laughs> He opened the door and he was like, good job, man, good job. <laughs> so here's your mail. <laughs> Should I check my prints? Like that? <laughs> and as I get in the car to leave, I was like, wait a minute. I'm going to thank this man because he could have, I, I would have went to jail for way more shit than an expired tag. And I said, hey, uh, why didn't you open the door? And he looked at me like I had punched him. Like, he was offended that I would ask that question, and I said, did I offend you, sir? He's like, well, you live in Tulsa, Oklahoma. You are a white man. You told the cop that this was your house. What do you think he would have done if I would have opened the fucking door? enough, I told him, I said, hey, um, I'm going to use that in a comedy bit. Uh, do I have your permission? And he was like, yeah. He goes, what are you doing? I said, actually, I had a show coming up. And he came to it, and he enjoyed it and everything. But there's a side part to that story. Uh, about two weeks later, I, was, I got lost going to a, another friend's house, and I was pulled over. And I had my phone out, and I was just looking at the GPS. And a cop pulled up behind me. Guess what cop it was? Say a guy. And he walked up and he knocked on the door. He was like, I know you, don't I? And I was like, the tax are, I got the tax done. <laughs> Can I go, officer? He was like, I don't like being lied to. I said, I didn't lie to you. He said, really? You really lived to that house? I was like, yeah, it was my house. I was going to die on that fucking hill. And then he said, well, I went back an hour later, sir, Mr. Bazaar. He said, uh, you know what I saw? And I was like, what'd you see at my house? <laughs> <laughs> Mind you, and I also told him I had moved because the address didn't match. Like, again, I was going to lie no matter what. And he said, well, he said, when I went back, your car was gone. I was like, imagine that. I went and did what you told me to do. He's like, nah. He said, you know what else I saw? I said, what? He said, there were uh, two African-American youths playing football in the front yard. And I looked at him, I said, that's why I fucking moved. So, uh... <laughs> there was no need for fucking girl that was a joke and a true story, so seriously. I actually haven't told that joke in five years, so... <laughs> I said earlier, I've been married four times, along my fourth, and uh, she's a great woman. Um, after surviving the car hits and everything else, I stayed single for a while, and I met her. When we first met, everything was awesome. And uh, then she told me one day, she was like, hey, I just want you to know that um, I was in a poly relationship for 10 years. I was like, okay, that's cool. Now, I'm almost 50, and I've always thought that poly meant either you, were, you did orgies or you were Mormon. Not true at all. <laughs> but because I love this woman, and I truly do, I decided to educate myself, and I did. And I found out that uh, that's not what poly is at all. Not even close. It's, it's about connection and shit like that. And I'm, like I said it earlier, I'm fucking lazy. And I was like, so you're telling me that if you want to go to a concert and I don't want to go, we could just call somebody <laughs> She's like, yeah, pretty much that's how it worked. So I was okay with it. But when I tell my friends, they always get creeped out. They're like, oh man, how could you do that? And I'm like, just so you guys know, this is not my first poly relationship. This is just the first one I knew about. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. I'm gonna leave you guys on this story. Uh, many, many years ago, I was in the United States Navy and uh, I was stationed in 1994, I was stationed in San Diego. And at that time, if you wore your uniform to stuff like SeaWorld, the zoo, 
um, you could get in for free and you could change once you got in, but they wanted the press to see that they were supporting you know, the armed services. And so we took it full advantage of that. We got into uh, Chargers games for free, which back then was fucking hard, but uh, <laughs> they were literally giving tickets away. But the coolest, out of all of the free shit we got to do, the coolest thing was concerts. Any concert we wanted to go to, we got it for free. Now they only had certain allotment of tickets, but we were there all the time. And then something happened to me in 1994 that changed the course of my life. And by saying that, I mean, I didn't go to a concert for 25 years after what I'm getting ready to tell you. Now it's a, it's a dark story. It's kind of like the boat ride from the Willy Wonka movie. <laughs> You're all confused and discombobulated. And the fat kid dies in chocolate at the end. But uh, in 1994, I went to a rodeo in La Jolla, California. At that rodeo, there was a beautiful woman that sang that night. Her name was Selena. I fell in love with her. I was going to learn Spanish and woo her. That's not how that shit worked. But I thought I had a chance. And at least in my mind at night, we really were hooking up. <laughs> one week after I saw her perform, one of my friends on my ship was like, hey, you remember that lady we saw? I was like, yeah. I said, she's in my dreams all the time. He was like, well, she's dead. I was like, what? He's like, yeah, she had got shot and killed by her tour manager in San Antonio. I was like, holy shit, that's gonna be awkward now. But we, we thought we might have to go back to war again, so I didn't put a lot of thought into it until a year later. One year later, for my birthday, 1995, May, my buddy got me tickets to go see Sublime. One of the greatest bands I've ever seen in my life, period. One week after I saw Sublime, Bradley Knowles, the lead singer, died of an overdose. And I said, holy shit, I'm killing music. For 25 years, I would not go to a concert. And this is how fucked up fate in life is. I would win concert tickets monthly. I would literally be like, I would tell my friend, hey, what caller did they say? Caller five, watch this. Ding, 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 you win. You win tickets, because I'm not going. I don't want to kill the Foo Fighters. Like. But my current wife is a huge supporter of live music. She loves concerts. She's like, if you're going to stay with me, you're gonna have to go to concerts and stop with this childish, superstitious shit. And I was like, but I killed music. She said, check your prints, but so. <laughs> so I decided to do a little social experiment unbeknownst to her. And I'm happy to say that in 2023, we've already got like seven different concerts booked. Because I know now that I didn't kill those people. Anybody with common sense would have known that shit. But what she doesn't know is how I came to that realization. I saw Justin Bieber 13 fucking times last year, and that little asshole is still walking the planet. So, my name is Billy Bizarre. Thank you guys so much. You guys are awesome.